Welcome back. So we are busy building our own deep learning library in Python. In the previous video, we have already seen how to implement momentum from scratch. Uh, well, SGD with momentum. Now in this one, we are going to be building uh, another optimizer that works in most cases, or probably in some cases, faster than or much faster than S SGD. So uh, in most of the cases, uh, default cases this optimizer which is called Adam optimizer has become uh, the go-to the default so we'll implement Adam optimizer in this video first of all let's just look at the algorithm itself so here's the algorithm and I'll just quickly walk you through what I'm gonna do with this so first of all alpha is the step size and there are two hyperparameters beta uh, beta 1 and beta 2 these are exponential decay rates if you have uh, studied higher mathematics you know what exponential decay rate is uh, if you have if, if you don't then you, you can just follow this algorithm it, it has been proposed by some of the best scientists right so you can just follow it as an algorithm but if you want to understand there are a lot of resources that will help you understand this so we're not going to discuss the mathematics we're just going to discuss implementations okay so uh, this function is basically your function that you want to calculate that you want to predict so this is your regression or classification whatever function that is and then of course theta is the initial parameter you are you will your initial weights that's just theta there are two uh, arrays that one will be momentum area and one will be uh, velocity array I, I will call first one this m as velocity and this v0 as square because whenever you update this it will contain a squared term that it will contain gradient squared so that's why i'm calling it square term uh, that gives you additional clarity and well it's just the number of epochs while you don't reach the end of the epochs uh, what you do is first calculate the gradients and then follow these two updations for these two parameters these mathematical updations which are basically exponential decay rates uh, exponentially weighted averages is the correct term for this class uh, cl uh, this uh, algorithm updation algorithm and the these two lines where you where it says compute bias corrected uh, term so we can omit this and most of the implementations omit this but it, what it basically says is that while calculating the uh, weighted averages when you just begin calculating your averages if you don't have enough data your average won't be correct right so in the beginning your average starts off a little bit shaky but as you proceed further and if you have a lot of epochs that we which we have in deep learning it will automatic automatically be corrected so including this bias corrected term won't matter in the long run so you can just omit that and I will omit that and finally you have to update the parameters so that's it this this is just the uh, algorithm on paper and the only difference is these two steps so your update uh, and also this updation so you'll update it slightly differently not just alpha times the gradients but alpha times this bias corrected term Okay, so let me just close this and now let's start try to implement. So I'm making this a, as a static function of this optimizer class. I will name it Adam optimizer. Again, it will take input, the mappings, uh, which is basically the correct output, the net, which is near network uh, object, then alpha, which I will set to 0.001 by default, lambda, that is the regularization parameter the betas that were two hyperparameters those are usually set to 0 0.9 and 0 0.99 uh, by practice that is no there are theories but generally you reach these conclusions through practice and then number of epochs i'll set that to five and then print act will be set to five and print will be set to true which means we need uh, to uh, we need this algorithm to print and tell us how our algorithm is performing while it's training okay so let's just try to implement this so first of all we need uh, the batch size let me just get this over with and here yeah. so the batch size of course is input dot shape and uh, we are using we are taking each and every column as uh, a, a data point so number of columns will be batch size so that's it and then we also need velocity and square vectors so let's just go there and I'll fix this later on we have two empty dictionaries here and then we'll need to initialize both of them to zeros but first of all we need 
uh, the zeros of the same shape as bias and weights so we'll set them to uh, we'll first loop all through entire parameters and then we'll first set velocities to equal to np dot zeros but of the same shape as that particular weight at that of that particular layer and we we'll do the same with biases and again we will do the same with squares now again we'll have to run th uh, through epochs so first uh, and we start from one so it will go up to epoch plus one and so we need to just basically uh, run through forward pass and backward pass just once so what we can do is instead of just uh, build, uh, again uh, building that from scratch we can just call gradient descent optimizer with only one epoch so it will just run forward and backward pass and we'll set print to false and also update to false so it will not update the parameters it will just run and store the parameters so yeah this is very important updating and printing is false because if you again print then it will print two times because we will manually print it again here okay uh, now what we have to do is we have to perform the updation that we have already read in this algorithm here updation of uh, velocity and squares but we, we have two velocities but that is bias and non bias so we update four times we have four terms to update so let's go ahead and run the loop through all the uh, velocity parameters it has same size as uh, the weight uh, net dot parameters so first let's update velocity then bias velocity square and then bias of square and then let's calculate our uh, gradients well we have already calculated the gradients but we don't need the gradients because here we are updating using a very different term so let's calculate this term and store it in a dictionary called update so let's create an empty update here and then the size will be same as the velocity or the parameters and then let's use the same formula uh, this formula to calculate the updates so here it is velocity times uh, velocity divided by np uh, dot squirt and stuff okay let's do the same with bias we have our weights and biases that we can update now so we can call this function update parameters with a learning rate let's do that and now we can form prediction so let's predict prediction and then let's calculate the loss so loss function net cost dot lower which means we'll first check whether it's mean squared error or cross entropy so if it's mean cross error then calculate MSE and if it's cross entropy then calculate cross entropy loss so I guess it's clear till here and then if uh, the current epoch is divisible by print at what we can do is we can just print the loss so this is our implementation of adam we have excluded bias correction because that does not matter in the long run and so let's test this out so i have edited this test file and i have already added this adam here so we'll test for classification as well as for regression first just normal gradient descent and then with momentum without momentum then finally with Adam and then we'll do the same for regression so let me just test this file test uh, dot py and let me just first clear all this and then let me just go to desktop slash neo then let me just go to src and let me just run python 3 test dot py Oh, I have not installed SKLearn. I have just changed the system for this video. So I'll quickly install that and then we'll proceed further. Let me just pause the video because I've also not installed Pandas, I guess. So I'll just install that. Okay, I don't know why, but my network is not working fine. So I'll take it, it's taking a lot of time to install those libraries. But so I'll just stop this video for now. And probably in the next video, we'll just check this if this add optimizer is working fine or not. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.